that they grow. We pray prayers and hope that they get answers. We don't pray prayers and anticipate that they're going to get answers. We make commitments and hope we get stronger. We don't make commitments and anticipate getting stronger. This woman said, when I touch the hem of his garment, the transference is going to take place. And so when she touched the hem of his garment in anticipation, virtue flowed out of Jesus on her. The scriptures are full of examples of the transference of the anointing. And yet we pretend it's not there or we get afraid of it. We don't want to talk about it. It seems to carry us in a different arena than we want to be in. But why do you think Paul laid hands on Timothy so that Timothy could be a pastor? At his ordination, Paul lays hands on Timothy because the anointing is transferable. And for Reverend Humes and for John Black, when we came to the altar at the annual conference, seven elders and a bishop laid hands on us because the anointing was transferable. And they could have stood back and just prayed if it wasn't transferable. But because it was, something was passing from them to us. They laid hands. The book of Hebrews talks about the doctrine of laying of hands. You know, we're in such a scientific age now, if we can't explain it, we don't like to talk about it. So we say, oh, it's just symbolic, it's just symbolic, it's just symbolic. Let me tell you something, there's more to symbolism than that, than the laying of hands. There's something there that's far beyond symbolism. You know, just the human touch is far beyond symbolism. When you're going through a crisis and someone just touches you with a human touch, you feel some transference. But what when someone under the unction of the Holy Spirit touches you? There's more than just symbolism. That's why the Bible says lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't go running around here transferring things to everybody and anybody and putting them in a position and setting them up high. Be careful about this thing because this anointing is transferable. Amen. Psalm 133 talks about the anointing coming off of Aaron. Yeah. It starts on his head, it runs down his beard, down his down his throat, all the way to the ground. And Aaron is a symbol of the old covenant. Faith community. I want to say the old covenant church, if you let me say that. In the same way, we are the new covenant church. And it's saying that the anointing runs down off of the leadership. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. I didn't call myself to be a preacher. Rem Hughes didn't call himself the evangelist, didn't call themselves in just that way. And so he puts the anointing on the head. And it runs down the head. It's that on the beard or the face, and it runs on down to the garment, which means it's running down to the stewards and the trustees and the class leaders. And it gets all the way down to the floor. It gets down to the cradle roll and to the nursery. It gets to the greeters and to the ushers. So that anybody coming in contact with this part of the body of Christ, if they touch us, the anointing should transfer to them. That's why you all have to come to the altar. Just grab each other and the anointing should transfer to you. The same oil that came off the head gets down to the feet. It's not a different oil when it gets down there. It's the same oil that went up here. Oh, y'all don't see it. Elisha. Elisha had a double portion of oil. He had his anointing and Elijah's anointing on his life. And Elisha died. They threw him in a grave. And one day they took a dead man and put him in the grave with his eyes. And I don't feel straight. That's how they do it over there. Yeah. They, they put, they use the grave over and over. So they open up the grave and they put the dead man in the grave with his And the dead man touched Elijah's bones and yeah. the anointing yeah. that was still in the bones of Elijah. After yeah. Elijah was dead and gone, yeah. the anointing got on the dead man and the dead man came back to life. Oh. This transfers can bring dead things back to life. The Bible says this anointing is so powerful that a sanctified wife. Y'all no, know that's in the Bible. She will purify her husband. The brother's still out in the club. The brother's still sinking and dipping and dipping. But the sanctification on the wife, when it gets on that man, God says, look at that anointing on 
on his life. And God's hand of protection, God's hand of protection is on the man because of a sanctified wife. Now don't fool yourself. It didn't say every wife that goes to church. It didn't say every wife that goes to church. It said a sanctified wife. Why God put this stuff in there if the anointing is not transferred? They said Paul's anointing was on him so heavy. They took the clothes off of Paul. <laughs> cut it up in handkerchiefs and aprons. Set the clothes on Paul to the sick. And the sick touched the clothes that was on Paul. And the anointing that was on Paul's life was transferred to them through the clothes. Oh my goodness. Y'all understand this thing when you know it? This all in the Bible. I didn't make it. The Bible says that Peter's anointed. Got all tangled up with his shadow. He with his shadow, y'all. With his shadow. And it says when Peter would just walk by. His shadow would cover somebody. And because his shadow covered somebody, they got healed. This anointing is transferable. I'm just going to talk about how it, the areas it transfers in for a quick minute and then we'll, we'll go home, but we'll go to church car. First, I want to say it literally, it literally transfers from one person to another. We have to understand there is a little transfer. When I hold hands in prayer, with, with, with especially with the ministry team, not to pick on anybody, but I'm going to tell you, when I hold hands with the ministry team, feel like a bolt of lightning comes out of this hand, goes through my body, and goes out the other side. That's what happens. We have, when we have intercessory prayer, intercessory prayer will be on, on a Saturday. When we have intercessory prayer out of here, it feels like the anointing will get on one and then jump on the other. And then jump. You literally feel it. You feel it in your hands. You feel it in your feet. You literally feel. It feels like fire, y'all. Shut up in your body. There's a literal translation. There's a literal transfer. There's a physical transfer. But I, I have seen the health of one individual be transferred to another. That's what healing is. And, and I don't want to scare you. I don't want to scare you. I don't want to scare you. But we are talking about spiritual experiences on Wednesday nights. And there are times when you can get so deep in prayer that the sickness. Mm -hmm. Y'all you know, get quiet in here. <laughs> the sickness on one person, the symptoms on one person gets transferred to the intercessor. Because the intercessor knows how to deal with it. The other person doesn't know how to deal with it. So the intercessor gets so deep in that anointing that they transfer their health to the sick one. And they receive, they receive this illness from the sick person. Because they know how to deal with it. It's a physical. There's a mental. When you start coming to church and getting around this anointing that's in this room, there's a mental transfer. You start learning words you never learned before. You know, you go back to the job. You start quoting things. People say, where did you get all that from? I got it from church. You know, the disciples hung out with Jesus. They were just rough, tough fishermen. And then when they got in front of the, all of the important people, the, the governors, the kings, yeah. and those kind of people, they said, where did these folks learn how to talk yeah. like that? Aren't they just rough, tough fish, fish, uh, fishermen? They said they were hanging out with Jesus. And the anointing mentally got on them. Wrapped up fishermen writing books in the Bible that have been read for generation after generation. Where'd they get that learning from? Came off of the anointing. My, my daughter works with me in, in, uh, in my secular life. We work shoulder to shoulder. She has gone to business school, but she has never gone to cardiovascular school. And I started talking to her. I said, well, the infodemplum track is 2.5. She knows exactly what that is. I said, well, the pericardium is 6. She knows exactly what that is. I said, they have grade 2 microstenosis. She knows exactly. How does she know that? She never went to school. To tell the truth, probably never picked up a book about it either. It was mentally transferred to her. You start hanging out with people like that.
like W.M. Johnson. Your vocabulary go wrong. You hear him use those words a few times. I'll try that one. I'll try that one. There's a mental transfer. There's an emotional transfer. I come to church. I'm going to tell you, I've been up all night. I came to church today. So, brother, uh, where is he? Amen. I came very, very tired. I get in here. There's an emotional turn. Hey, brother, can't feel. What time you what time you got here this morning? Because I sure didn't beat you. And if I didn't beat you, I, I, I almost got you. Almost caught him this morning. Tired. Get into the house of the Lord. Hear them young folks sing. And their emotions. Get transferred onto me. I came in gloomy. Now I'm excited. I came in tired. Now I'm full of energy. I came in at the bottom. Now I'm at the top because the anointing is transferable. Yeah. When you're having a terrible day, when life is coming at you from every side, when you can't get your mood right, don't stay home. Come into the anointing and let the anointing transfer on your life. But come expecting it to. You got to come expecting it to. Oh, we dealt with, I'm going to skip. It's intellectual. It's developmental. It's energetical. It's occupational. It's vocational. It's inspirational. All these forms are transferred. I can go through each and every one. But I want to bring home the point. For this whole sermon series. Is that if we want to grow we got to be where God's people are growing. And, you know, if you, if you think about it on the natural, if you want to see where to bless, bless the plant something, look where something's already growing. You don't plant something where it's dead. You don't plant something where it's dry. But if you got a little part in the bottom of your field where everything seems to grow, that's where you plant something you want to grow. And if the church of God is growing the way it's supposed to be and you want to grow, plant yourself in the house of the Lord. Let me tell you that Ebenezer, we have to understand that faithfulness to worship is a sign of our spiritual maturity. If I think I can grow and be okay with God and do all Oh, God, God, sitting in my house watching my TV, I have fooled myself. But until I get enough spirituality to know that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Until I realize that unless my feet be planted in the house of the Lord, I can't flourish in the church of our God. I have to understand that the power to transform my life is in this room. And it's in each and every one of you. Oh, yeah. well, I got mine. I got mine. I don't know if you got yours. Because I have discovered that the anointing yeah. is transformed. Oh, yeah. Go home and search that thing out. That's when you got to tease it out. But when it hits you, Right. You probably never miss church again. Right. When you realize that if I go to church anticipating, if I go to church desiring, if I go to church expecting, right. God will meet me there. And the anointing will come on my life that's on right. others. And I don't have to go through everything they went through right. to get the blessing yeah. that's on their lives. I can steal the blessing by having to transform. Yeah. In my life. We're going to open the doors of the church and offer you a chance to get saturated with the oil that's in this place. Perhaps there's someone that doesn't even know this Jesus we're talking about. Maybe there's someone who's backslidden or need a recommitment. Or perhaps there's someone who just is looking for a new church home. Whoever you may be, the extension of the invitation is to you. Will you all stand?